Have you ever wondered what goes into this one seed? How it gets into a bag, into your planter, ultimately into the field? But well, we're gonna take a look at this one seed and all the science that goes into it, the people, the testing, all the data that's collected on it, all to chase down the next bushel. Now let's go science the heck out of this thing. This growing season, join me as I meet and talk with expert growers, agronomists, researchers, and breeders looking for ways to get more performance from each and every soybean to help you chase down the next bushel. Are you Joey? I am. Are you Clint? Clint Chaffer. Hey, Joey Jedlica. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. So tell me what you do here at Bayer. Yeah, so here I'm the North America Plant Health Product Development Team Lead. So I'm leading the team of pathologists across the different row crops that really manage and execute all of our plant health disease trials. Previously, before this role, I, I was a soybean breeder for about five years. Well, that's, that's exactly the person we need to talk to. We'll be excited to show you some of the things that we're doing within soybean breeding. Well, I can't wait, so let's get to it. Let's go. All right. So Joy, where are, we, uh, where are we going here? Yeah, so we're heading outside of our precision genomics lab. What actually ends up happening in here? So in this molecular lab, Clint, we can take individual soybean seeds, grind or collect tissue, and from that seed tissue, extract DNA, which allows us to then go into the genome and track through different genetic markers that might be present in each of those individual seeds. Wow, and when you're saying different markers and stuff, I mean, are you looking for different attributes like, you know, resistance to disease or yield potential or things of that nature? Exactly. That's just amazing that, uh, you know, you can start out with a little seed and get all of that data through these types of machines back here. Exactly. We want to provide as much data to our breeders as possible to uh, make selections and advance which of these individual seeds we identify as the highest likelihood of success to then go into the field trials, because field trials is still absolutely critical to everything that we're doing here. Still want to get things in real life, but, right? Exactly. Yeah. This almost reminds me of the movie uh, Moneyball, right? I mean, it's all down to, to numbers and, and probability and things of that nature to, you know, to find that best player. And that's almost like what it seems like you're trying to do here is what is that best seed that we can get to? But, well, what do you think? You want to head on in? Let's go on in. All right. All right. So uh, what are we standing in front of here? So this is our bulk extraction system okay. where we, we can take those individual soybean seeds or a, a group of soybean seeds. And after we have this seed, we can grind it up into a little fine powder just like this. Oh, wow. Well, check that out. Pretty cool. So. Each of these would be from an individual soybean line that could become the next commercial variety. And I'm gonna say that's the one. It's the next big one. I like it. There you go. So if we come through here, we start with that ground seed tissue and we go through this machine and add different extraction reagents or chemicals. And ultimately we end up with one of these plates of, of liquid. So each one of those holes now are are a variety of that. Exactly. Wow. That, okay. That's exactly right. It looks like a little like soybean, you know, slushy or maybe the start of a margarita. Do you, do you think it might taste good? I, I don't know. Yeah, you know. So we can take this plate of DNA and head to the next station. All right. This is gonna be the next stop, Clint. So if you want to, you can go ahead and load this in right up here. Okay, I'll try not to spill this. Be careful, there's a lot of precious DNA in there. All right, And there then we you go. can go ahead and press start and we'll see what this machine can do. Okay, there we go. This is where you're gonna tell me I, I pushed the wrong button and something's gonna burn up now. I hope not. <laughs> It'll take this plate where we started that DNA extraction process through this automation and move it over here where it will add the next chemicals as part of that DNA extraction process. It's just fully automated to, to allow us to run this throughout the day. And again, this is just getting down to a even a cleaner sample than where we left the... The bulk extraction The system. bulk extraction, yep. oh. Comes out and it's going to stack it up now. And then it'll grab the next plate and do the, the same process over again. Huh, 
if you want to grab that plate out and we can take it to the next machine where we do the genotyping and yeah. sequencing. Yeah, let's go. The next bushel is in here That's somewhere. Right. That's right. Yeah, we even changed colors. Now we got blue liquid. Pretty so. cool, isn't it? All right, all right, here we go. This will be the last process where we get that, that clean, purified DNA that allows us to then do that genotyping and sequencing. Dad and I have always talked, you know, the first time we see our soybean seed is usually when we're opening the bag up, yep. right? There's just a lot of stuff that goes into it to get it to that point. There's years and years of breeding through our precision breeding methodologies to get us to a commercial bag of seed. Would it be fair to say that, that we're taking kind of a, almost an analog soybean seed and turning it into a, a digital record? Everything we're moving towards in, in breeding and we've been working to is to digitalize and, and bring in new technology, new analytics to the research we're doing. So after all of this lab work, then we have selected which entries, which individuals we want to go into subsequent testing. Testing for yield, testing for performance, maturity, those types of things. Some of our disease screening would also go through the field. But we also have controlled environments, growth chambers that we leverage for some of that disease screening as well. Well, let's head to the growth chamber let's, then. Let's go do it. Let's make sure we leave the DNA behind though. It's a good call. So Clint, we're now in one of our growth chambers where we're looking at frog eye leaf spot. Okay. So we can inoculate, meaning infecting with the pathogen. So. Are these coming from the same seeds uh, that we would have mashed up in the lab? This would be material that at one point went through that lab. How long to get from that level to this level? Probably two or three years before we would do some of this detailed disease screening. You know they have the potential. Now you just need to see are they resistant or yep. tolerant or whatever the, else. Exactly. So we start out with something that looks like this. These are spores from frog eye leaf spot. Okay. This is like if you leave your bread out too long. <laughs> That's right. In order to inoculate for this, we simply spray this solution with the frog eye leaf spot pathogen on the plant. You got to turn everything into a soup before you can use it. <laughs> and we make you do all the work. Well, yeah, that, that, that's what happens. I think I'm going to pick, uh, pick number 10 right here. Good luck, little fella. So we just want to get him soaked. Just want to cover all of the leaves of that plant and then in a couple weeks we'd be able to come back and identify if it has any symptoms on it. So I need to stop expecting to see something. So, so yeah, you don't need to look at these, but <laughs> okay. luckily we do have some that we can take a look at. Well, let's go look at those. Awesome, let's go. So what's the importance of having a room like this? The really nice thing about a growth chamber is the fact that we can control the lights, we can control the temperature, we can control humidity and, and how much water we're giving each and every plant. A lot of diseases need high moisture yep. in order for that disease infection to take place. So we, we, can, we can mimic a lot of those different environmental factors. Are there any of these diseases that thrive in like cooler temperatures? The cool wet seasons or springs really are, are very conducive to a number of diseases. I only ask because I feel like you brought me to like the hottest room that's like, you know, in this building here. There are a lot of lights <laughs> in here and a lot of heat. <laughs> I can definitely tell we have some infection here. I never know what these ratings are. First off, what's the scale? For frog eye leaf spot here, we would be collecting on a one to five scale. Something that looks like this with a little bit of lesions and infection, we'd rate this a two. Okay. So more resistant. Whereas something like this where we see a lot more lesions and, and we see infection across more and more leaves, we would rate this a four. Where would I find this data on the on the varieties I'm looking yep. for? Pick your, your favorite variety and go to that seed guide and, and you'd be able to see what is that rating for frog eye leaf spot? What What is the rating for something like Phytophthora root rod or uh, soybean cyst nematode, for example? Well, you'll have to let me know how Box 27 does. I think that's the that, that's that's my winner. That that was the so, one you picked. I think what's next is we're actually heading out to the heading out to the field where they're harvesting uh, some plants. Then, yep. right? Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, you're gonna have to lead the way, otherwise I'm gonna get lost. I here, can so. do that. I, okay. th I think I can find us out. All right, here we go. It's a little chillier than when we were last in that growth chamber there. 
Where are we at right now? So we're a couple hours north of St. Louis in Stonington, Illinois, at our facility here where we have a production site as well as a, a breeding and research facility. The research facility manages a number of different field trials in this general geography and they're actually out today doing some harvesting. So hopefully we can go out and, and take a look at some of those plot combines. Well, that's awesome. Well, what do you think about uh, heading out to uh, one of the plots then? I think we should. All right, sounds good. So Joey, tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, uh, you got uh, got kids? Actually just had had my first little baby boy about five months ago. Oh, so I'm sure you're you're just getting the best night's sleep that you can possibly get, right? You know, last night was okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's been a number of sleepless nights waking up a few times with the little guy, but it's worth it. What what'd you do before Bear? I was was in grad school, so I did my my graduate program at the University of Nebraska. So big ah. a big Cornhusker fan. Yeah. I knew that I really wanted to go into grad school and, and do something agronomic. So that, that's where soybeans really came in. I, I really enjoy being able to know that we're making gains and, and really helping farmers at the end of the day. Seeing all of that stuff that's, that's taking place and then convert that into where we're headed now with uh, going into plots. Yeah, it looks like we are here. Combines are rolling. All right, so this is the plot then. Yep, we have these field trials spread all throughout the states that we would be growing soybeans in so that we can provide that data to the commercial organization and, and ultimately to growers. Most plots I'm used to, you know, have like a whole bunch of signs, you know, laid out, but I guess it'd be probably tough to put thousands of signs. So. It would be very tough, but we know exactly what every inbred line is based on a grid system. So when we were back in the lab, they went through that vetting process. So you found the best possible seeds at that point. And then that's what's been transferred out here. Is that kind of the process? That, that's exactly the process. In each stage of testing, we would dwindle it down to, to a, a much smaller subset, ultimately to deliver to that commercial organization, deliver to the, the breeders and the scientists that are really making some of those final decisions on what goes into that next bag of Asgro seed. Ah, that is so cool. Can we walk out here a little bit? Yep, of course. Awesome. So Joey, how are these plots set up then? All of the plots in this field would be two row plots. So the, the two rows that I'm seeing in between would be one inbred line, and then this is those would be a, a completely separate inbred line. Okay. I would assume that it takes some pretty cool technology to be able to harvest each one of these and keep them separate. That's right. We, we use some pretty cool specialized plot combines for breeding and, and plot research. And I would say that's these blue combines back here? That's right. This combine actually, we're able to harvest two of these two row plots at the same time and keep that seed distinct through the entire combine process. Gotcha. Well, since we're both standing in two different products here, this is where we need to challenge each other. I'm putting my money on this horse over here. I'm seeing a few more pods here than in that one. <laughs> I probably shouldn't challenge the uh, the soybean expert here, so. <laughs> <laughs> they both look pretty good though. Well, I tell you what, for how cold it is out here, how about we go back to that growth chamber and get a little warmth back in us? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Let's right. go. I'll hop in with you. Excellent. We saw how experts like Joey can take massive amounts of data to take this seed from the lab out here to the field. And from here, we're gonna do more testing, more analysis to put the right seed in the bag, into your planter, into your field, and ultimately yield the next bushel. Join me next episode as I head on out to Ohio and we talk seed treatments with the one, the only, Bushel Billy. Come along. Come along.